Hi everyone, this is Junk from Junk Mods, and today we'll be looking at using trainers with your original Xbox games. So, what are trainers, and why are they useful? Well, this is what Wikipedia has to say about this. Trainers are programs made to modify behavior of a computer game, usually using addresses and values, in order to allow cheating. In the 1980s and 1990s, trainers were generally integrated straight into the actual game by cracking groups. And when the game was first started, the trainer loaded first, asking the player if he or she wanted uh, which to cheat. Then the code would proceed to the actual game. In the cracker group release lists and intros, trained games were marked with uh, one or more plus signs after them, one for each option in the trainer. For example, the Mega Crew presents Miss Astro Chicken plus plus. Nowadays, trainers also come as separately downloadable programs. Instead of modifying the game's programming directly, values stored in memory are changed instead. And trainers typically come in two different formats, ETM or XBTF. So what we're going to be looking at is setting up the Excel Red trainer program correctly and then running a few games with the trainers enabled. All right, so firstly, we need to get the Excel Red program and the link is in the description. So you need to download that, unpack it, and FTP that program to your folder of choice. Uh, on my Xbox, I run it out of the emulators folder on the F partition, but you can put it elsewhere if you want to. Uh, and once we have the program set up the way we want, uh, where it's actually displayed correctly in our dash menu, we need to ensure that we have trainers for our games to actually use in the program. Uh, most XBMC builds provided a set of trainers located in the XBMC trainers folder, but if you're lacking those, you can grab a set from the link in the description here. And so now that we have both the program and the trainers, uh, we'll now go and set it up and then run a game or two with some trainers enabled. So the way I have my trainer program set up is with the trainers folder inside of the program itself. Uh, so this trainer folder that I'm using used to be located in my XBMC folder, uh, but since I like to set up my trainers from within the program itself and not through an XBMC build, uh, this is the method I'll be explaining. Um, so go ahead and place your populated trainers folder in here with the rest of the files and then open up the exobred.ini file. And this is going to have all of your folder designations in it. We need to ensure that the paths are pointing in the correct direction. Um, so looking at mine as an example, you can see that it's pointing to the right spot, which is this path here. And we also have to make sure that the games are being pointed to correctly as well. So on my partition, uh, they're located off the root in the games folder. Uh, which we can also see designated here. So once we have this established, when we launch the program, it should look something like this. All right, so here we have it loading and enumerating the games and tra trainers. Uh, it's basically going to pick up anything in your trainers folder and uh, attempt to load it. And in most cases, it'll load the, uh, the default amount that you would get in an XBMC build, which is around 750, 800. Um, but anyway, looking at the um, menu here, uh, it's basically showing you the games that you can go ahead and use that are present on your hard drive, um, the default that XDE files associated to those, and then the trainer that corresponds. So uh, for the example here, I'm using Half-Life 2, I believe. So what you do is first you go and select your executable, so your game. And once you select the game, it'll take you to a second screen, which allows you to designate the trainer. Uh, whether you have to pick a PAL version or NTSC version, uh, those distinctions are available on the second screen. So as you can see, there's a bunch of different options that I have already selected. Uh, and I'm just going to go ahead and load up the game here. And uh, I'll speed up the uh, loading and everything on the edit to uh, get into the gameplay here. Alright, so we've loaded up uh, point insertion here, and if you're familiar with the game, it's, it's essentially the, one of the first chapters, if not the first. And as you can see, I already have access to the gravity gun, uh, well, the full arsenal essentially. So, the trainer is working. Um, I did patch and load this previously, so I knew it would work, but uh, it's kind of cool. Um, so, yeah, you can go ahead and mess with the game in ways that uh, were never originally intended with uh, the trainers on, uh, which is the case for all of the different games. 
that have trainers. Uh, so this has a no clip built into it, which is actually really cool. You go ahead and enable that with, I believe, holding the black button and pressing down on the D-pad. Uh, turns that on and off. You can toggle that in-game in real time, uh, which is what I'm doing here. So I just turned it off and float it back down. So essentially, yeah, when you have your trainer set up and uh, you patch your executables correctly, uh, that's all the trainer is, is just basically patching that extra, the, the alterations in code to the executable so that when the game is launched, it picks up on the changes and this is the kind of fun stuff that we end up with. So I'm going to go ahead and show another one here, which is uh, Fight Night Round 2. Um, and I've turned on uh, like Infinite Health and a bunch of other stuff. Um, I'm just showing this very briefly, though, to show you something that uh, you may run into. Uh, bear in mind at the very bottom of the screen where it says Target Title, right now it says Counter-Strike. And I have Counter-Strike selected as my game, but I went into the Fight Night Round 2 uh, trainers. So then I realized that. I was like, oh, wait, no, no, no. I want to select Fight Night as the game and then go ahead and pick the correct trainers. Uh, so as you can see, I had infinite health and stamina on, and I'm just going to quickly show that here. Uh, I'll speed up the uh, footage at this point. Uh, it kind of sucks that you can't pick uh, Hagler or Hearns, but uh, it's not a big deal. <laughs> so I went with Holyfield and uh, Winky here. So as you can see, from uh, the first couple of punches, I'm not taking any damage, so that means that the trainer is doing its job and uh, it's working correctly. So there you have it, uh, running trainers on uh, original Xbox games. Uh, you can go ahead and run them on uh, executables present on the uh, D drive. So if you drop a game in and let it load in the tray in your dash environment, and then go ahead and select it as uh, a title to patch, it should work as well. I uh, hope that helps out a bit. If you have any questions or anything to add, please leave a comment, and as always, thanks for watching.